Dorika Tenji, a journalist for an online publication, was detained last week by the Malawi Police Service, NPS, at their headquarters in Lingwe, the Media Institute of Southern Africa. Uh, Malawi Chairperson Teresa Danga, who confirmed the development, has said they are currently monitoring the situation. Police said the arrest was as a result of a complaint by the Director of the National Intelligence Service, who accused Tenji of publishing a story that contravenes Electronic Transaction and Cyber Security Act. Tenji denies authoring and nor publishing the story in question. Now joining me on the news at this time is Teresa Danga, Malawi Chairperson on Media Institute of Southern Africa. Thank you for your time. Thank you so much for having me. All right, so let's get straight to it. Uh, what can you tell us about the two journalists who were arrested in Malawi and the latest regarding the case? Yes, indeed. Um, so the journalists were uh, invited in court for questioning at uh, the Malawi Police Headquarters following a complaint from the National uh, Intelligence Services uh, Director um, that uh, they had published uh, or their online publication had published a story that was not true. Um, so at first it was just one journalist, a female one, who denied having written or published the story. Uh, which did not have a byline, at least uh, by the time that it was published. Um, uh, however, at the moment, um, the police have dropped all charges following the interventions that uh, we undertook. We did discuss with the Minister of Information, who also discussed with, uh, um, uh, with uh, the Malawi police uh, and the complainant to drop the charges. All right, now let's talk about press freedom in the country. How easy or hard is it for journalists to do their work without interference from the government or any other stakeholder? Um, from 2022, it has been especially quite difficult. In, uh, from 2020, 2021, it was slightly much better. Even if you look at uh, the uh, Press Freedom Index uh, by Reporters Without Borders, in 2021, the country performed relatively well um, because it was on position 62 out of 180 countries that were assessed. But this time around, it has dropped to position 80 um, uh, of the 180 uh, countries that have been assessed. Partly, it's because of um, state, I would say, uh, attacks uh, that are perpetrated by state institutions. So you have seen, we have seen that increasingly the Malawi police is being used to invite journalists for questioning or detaining them uh, because of stories that they have done, which is uh, completely something that we are against um, and would say we have uh, actually uh, advised that those that complain should use the civil route so they can go to court and complain if they think that their, their image has been injured. All right. Um, now so it, we've increasingly seen these attacks from state institutions, um, verbal attacks, physical attacks, and those uh, where we see journalists being detained. All right, still on press freedom, and of course a journalist being able to uh, do their jobs without uh, interference. Let's talk about the effort of your organization, MISA. What have you been doing to ensure uh, that journalists work in a free you know, and a fair environment? And also, should they require justice, what, what do you do to assist in that regard? Mm -hmm. So our organization does a number of things. First is that we continuously monitor the environment, so daily monitoring. This is why we are able to pick in uh, such instances where a journalist has been uh, attacked uh, in any way. It could be a verbal attack maybe from a source, it could be a verbal attack or uh, a physical attack from maybe the members of the general public and so forth. So we do continuous monitoring. From there, then, we issue most times statements and making, taking positions on the matter. Um, uh, but further than that, when we need a perpetrator, or some instances, we have had uh, cases where journalists have been arrested and taken to court uh, because of stories that they have written. So most times we will look for representation, legal representation for such journalists. Um, we have so far had uh, some good, um, uh, I would say, representation, and the most times we definitely end up winning these cases. So. We have not had a journalist who has been taken to court and end up in prison serving a sentence, but most times when we do that, we usually end up 
uh, with an acquittal uh, over the thing. All right. Thank you so much for your time. Teresa Danga, thank you so much.